at the time I wasn't in the union, and that was a big stumbling block for me. Um, I, but fortunately, when I when I was younger, they were, it was during a time where they're doing a lot of low budget independent films, and that's where I got my first work because uh, you didn't have to be a union member. And, uh, and I believe they actually went to Dick Smith initially to do Jane Pittman, and I don't remember why he couldn't do it, but Dick recommended me. He says, you know, there's a, a kid in California who is the you know the, the next real big talent, and I think you know he would be great for you, and, and so on and so forth. So they had contacted me and, and said Dick recommended me, and I was flattered and, and um, was fascinated by the project and, and, and uh, just wanted to do it. But I said, you know, I'm, I'm not in the union, you know, and this is going to be a union thing. And they said, we know, uh, but we have a solution. We're, we're, we think if we hire a union makeup artist and, and, and he gets paid, then you can do the work, and, and, and that's how we'll do it. You know? So that's kind of what, how it started out. Uh, the union makeup artist ended up hiring was Stan Winston, who was also much younger at that time, and, and had, he had already won an Emmy for um, a show called Gar Gargoyles, where he did this gargoyle makeup. And uh, I, uh, I was the impression that they were just hiring a guy and just going to pay him off, and I was going to do the work. You know, uh, it, it turned out that you know Stan wanted to be involved with it as well, and I and I kind of said, you know what, I, I want this to be my show. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like I don't want to do it with somebody else; it's going to be too hard. And we lived 50 miles apart from each other, and we came from different schools of thought. You know, I was from the Dick Smith school of thought, which was, you know, different foam rubber, different plasters, different techniques altogether. In that he would do these overlapping smaller appliances. Stan was from the John Chambers school of thinking. John Chambers was the guy who did Planet of the Apes. John made these molds where he did everything in one piece. If he did the Jane Pittman makeup, he would have made it all in one big mask out of one big mold with this what was called a base plate, where you'd have a life cast and a big thing that you could clamp on the sides. And I said, I don't know how this is going to work for the two of us to be doing this, living that, that far apart, having completely different techniques. You know, Stan wanted to learn the Dick Smith technique, and he would be happy to do that. And I said, but you know, I think one person has to sculpt this stuff from beginning to end. We have different styles and stuff, and. Uh, it turned out that I said, well, why don't we do this? Well, we'll, we'll get, once we get a live cast, we'll both sculpt something, we'll present it to the director, and he'll choose which one he likes, and whoever he chooses, then that person will sculpt them all. Okay. So we, we got the live cast of Cicely Tyson, which we both took uh, over at Disney Studios, and because um, Stan had served an apprenticeship there, and we needed a place to, to take this live cast. And we both did our sculptures. And before that, we actually had the opportunity to meet, because um, I'd never done a, an appliance makeup on a, on, a, on a black person before, and, and was a little concerned. And I actually didn't have a lot of reference on how black people aged. And uh, I, I kind of expressed that concern. And they had tracked down this 120-year-old woman. I believe her name was Pearl Williams, if I remember correctly. I'm surprised I actually remember that. And she was like 120 years old, and and we went and met her, and uh, photographed her and stuff. And I was amazed at how she didn't look old at all. I mean, I would have thought she was 60 years old, you know. And I thought, well, this is interesting. I mean, they don't they don't age the same way that we do, you know. And and so I did my sculpture as uh, what I thought was more realistic, more, very much looking like what what Pearl did. Uh, Stan did a much more wrinkly, more kind of mummified, exaggerated age sculpture, and but it looked older, you know. And, and the director looked at them both and goes, "Well, I really don't know. They look, both look good. This one looks older to me, you know." And it's like, "Yeah, but this one looks more like what they really look like, you know." Well, we want to make sure they look old, you know. Anyway, so, it, what ended, what we ended up doing is because the time was ticking away, was I. I sculpted the, the earlier stages, and the, the remains, the oldest stage, actually Stan sculpted. Um, I said, you know, we have to get together. I said, I'd schedule it all out. I said, on this date, we have to get together and compare our sculptures and kind of make them look like the same thing. I had my sculptures done. He didn't have his done, you know. So, so I'm molding mine because I'm going to have to run this from rubber. I don't, I don't have enough time. So I molded mine and was running the rubber. When he finally got his done, I came out and looked at it, and I suggested some things to make them look similar. And, uh, then it was time to shoot, so I actually had to take, I took Stan's mold, and I stayed in L.A. and ran the rubber in his molds, and actually made some ears for his, and hands for his stage, um, and then went to, because he was doing the earlier stages, which was paint makeups on her, and then when we went to Louisiana, and we both applied, uh, you know, I would do one side, he'd do the other, basically. Uh, and it, interesting thing, though, because I made, 
he didn't quite understand the overlapping technique and he did something that, that was very different in that with an overlapping appliance uh, you, you know the two pieces kind of taper off to, and kind of overlap at certain points to kind of remake up the bulk and what Stan did was he actually just had pieces butt up together um, but because he had these kind of heavy wrinkles it was kind of not a bad solution but we started with my makeups and I remember Stan kind of starting to sweat it because he goes oh man this is so different than what I did and it's like I hope this is going to work you know? <laughs> and, uh, and they work fine you know and, and it's, it, it turned out to be a pretty good thing for the time I'm sure that it was about four hours or something that's you know we were a little slower in those days and and, th and those back then still that was were the spirit gum days I mean that's when you know, spirit gum was still our main adhesive. I mean, I had the kind of cutting edge adhesive, which was at the time was a medical adhesive called, uh, what was it called, Medico. Yeah. And we would only use the Medico around the lips, um, and the rest was put on with spirit gum. But this was shot in Louisiana. It was very hot and very humid, and the makeup would only stay on for so long. And you can repair it to a certain point, but it became, you know, became the rubber is like a sponge would soak up the sweat and it would be something you could not glue down so as we still try to do these days the makeup always looks the best when it's first applied or when it's you know fairly fresh and it gets degenerates through the course of the day so it's better to shoot the closer stuff first but they never do you know but they learned on that film they kind of had to at a certain point because at the end of the day the piece would just be hanging on by the we used a, a adhesive they used to use to put eyelashes on called duo it's actually like a latex itself, and we would put stipple duo over the edges to help blend it into the skin. And sometimes at the end of the day, the duo was the only thing that was holding it on. It was just like stretching, you know, out this piece was just sweat-soaked piece of rubber that was just hanging on by a thread.